Good morning. You're here with the slugs. Lena, John, and the slugs. Mm. Johnny, go girl. Eckhart Tolle, a very good friend of ours. Um, we've met him in person, and he and we correspond telepathically with him almost constantly since this ascension has begun. Me and Eckhart Tolle and John are in very close. Uh, we have a very close friendship. And yes, we do indeed. And um, I'm actually channeling Eckhart this morning. And the reason is because he has said in some of his lectures, you could come back as a slug, you know, if you don't play your cards right. Something to that. Go ahead, Eckhart. Well, good morning. Good morning, Eckhart. Hello, John. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yes. Mostly hello, Lena. Not mostly. Well, then hello to the slugs. Yes. Who are now procreating and having babies. And, um, you know, you, they love you. You can hear them. This morning, uh, this is Eckhart Tolle speaking in the universal consciousness. Yes. This morning, uh, you, uh, you were just talking to John, and they were they were in right behind your head. You had them sitting on a pillow, mm -hmm. and they love you. And in the morning, they know you are you're awake. Right now, they came. They both came rushed to this side because you were sitting in this direction. They love when you tap the the screen, and they love their home. They're like in paradise here. They just got some shaved fish for breakfast and some seaweed. And they are beside themselves with every day is a new wonderful treat and a joy with Lena taking care of us. But not all slugs will have it that good, and we all know that. Mm -hmm. Not many people would take the time to make such a beautiful little terrarium and order a new one so that it will accommodate the family comfortably. And nobody's doing that, really. Not really. With just a couple of ordinary garden slugs and... Lena is their goddess, you know, and they are aware of John as well. They know that these two are at the helm, and they know that Christopher brings in plants to feed them, and they are very much, their genius intelligence is what I'm saying. And again, not all slugs are genius intelligence, but these two are, because they were once humans, or rather humanoid bots. That's what you're looking at right here. Beings that once looked very much like you, Lena, or you, John, when you had a body, mm -hmm. living their lives just like Kat Sarah and Reed and Patricia Edwards. They were all human bots, and they didn't get it right. And they came back as slugs. <laughs> and you can come back as a slug for as uh, many times as you need to before you succeed as a slug again. Mm. They can, you can get picked off by seagulls. You can get crushed under a shoe. And then it's like, oh, you reincarnate and you're like this again. I'm a bloody slug. And you got to figure out how exactly a slug gets it right. Well, a slug gets it right by staying alive for as long as it possibly can. These aren't slugs, though. They're snails. Well, these have graduated a bit. I see. These are a little bit ahead of the game. They're, like, more intelligent than Kat Sarah and Reed and Pam Patricia Edwards. They're more intelligent. So they came back as snails, you see. They got the slug part right, so now they're snails. And that is the evolution. That's going to be the evolution of humanoid bots. Correct. What if they get it right this time? They're still coming back as slugs. Even like all these very, very advanced humanoid bots that really pass. It doesn't matter if they pass. They didn't pass well enough. They will have to come back as slugs. Everybody? Everybody. 
that's not a bona fide human, yeah. They're going to have to start on the new on their new earth as slugs. Who's this one? It's, I think it's Ryan. Mm. Oh, boy. Mm. Tough break, you guys. Well, no, because these are the happiest uh, snails you'll ever meet. Do they have any memory? Uh, ask away, because this is what today's lesson is part of. Do they have any memory of what? Yes, they have full memory of when they were humanoid bots. They remember what it was like to be just like you. Walking around or doing whatever you needed to do for yourself, having fun, going to shows, having friends. They remember all that and they know that they no longer have access to that life, but that they must perfect their life as a snail or a slug or whatever. They have full consciousness. That sounds like a nightmare. It, it can be. Unless they just find a beautiful little garden somewhere, like the one that you found these in, and just stay there and relax and live peacefully until they die a natural death. What if something kills them? All the better, really, mm -hmm, because it's out of their control. So if something kills them, like a cat or something comes along and just uh, stomps on it or chews them up or whatever, they graduate to the next thing. So maybe next time there'll be a frog or something a little bit more dex, dex, has more dexterity and more, you know, visual clarity. And they, these, don't, don't, don't worry. These ones are very happy. Mm -hmm. And thanks to you, they're having a great time. But they were once humanoid bots. Like cat, like reed, like, uh, OG, like, uh, Nan. Nan's a humanoid bot. Sorry, Lena, yes. No little thanks to the internet. Really? Yeah. The internet creates bots. It makes people into r robots. It wins them over and... Okay. And it diseases their minds. Mm -hmm. You're safe. Yeah, Lena, we're safe. We have to deliver these messages. That's where we're at. Okay, jolly good. So uh, everything else, Lena, is going fine. <clears throat> yes, Eckhart, everything is very well. well. Do you have any advice uh, for today? Take it as it comes and just do very little and uh, take your supplements Christopher, I believe, is preparing those supplements. Don't forget your juice. Your aloe juice is very important. Don't skip that. All right. I'm not going to. I don't skip it. I know. Aloe juice. Yeah. They also might enjoy a little aloe juice if you give them a little bit, but it would have to be pure, like a little tiny thimbleful. All right. You hear that, Chris? Aloe for the snails. Okay. Oh, very nice. All right, Lena, let's go. All right, thank you very much, Eckhart Tolle, and thank you, John. <laughs> and thank you, Snails, Brian, and... And, uh, Liza, <laughs> and family. <laughs> I know it's getting crowded in there, kids. Don't worry, you're going to upgrade today or tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> you could actually keep this terrarium the way it is until you're, you know, until... The next time that you uh, have access to water, Lena, you should just, you mean take them in the shower, have them shower when I shower. Yeah, they're fine right now. They need all this stuff and they, the babies are still small and you don't want to do anything yet. You don't have to worry about changing it. Yeah, it smells surprisingly fresh mm. with all this crap in there. Yeah, they're algae eaters. They keep everything nice and clean. So they're great pets. They're, they're. They truly are. I love them. And again, they co they cooperate with me. Oh, so yeah, when I was talking to John this morning and I was saying, yeah, we're going to have to set them free. There's so many of them now. Like we'll have in the spring. Well, we'll just and all there was like a collective sound that I could hear from this thing like, "No, we don't want to go." Yeah. No, they don't. They like it here. But to be honest with you, 
it's God's world, and God's world is their world. So in the spring, what you could do is you could take the terrarium outside, open it up. It's that simple. Take the terrarium outside, open it up, and see who leaves and see who stays. And just leave it outside for a week. Okay? That's a great idea. You know? And you might find that Liza and, uh, and leave food in it the way it always is. Just leave it the way it is. Right. In springtime. Yeah. And Liza... Ryan and Liza, my bet is by that time, they're going to be very large. Those two you keep. Yeah, right. Those two you keep. You'll always know who Liza and Ryan are. And uh, they stay inside with you because they're much too domesticated now. But what the other ones will be domesticated by the spring. Well, that's, that's their God. They, they belong to God. You leave them out in the world. And if they decide to stay after a week, they get to stay in the terrarium. If they don't stay after a week, you bring who's ever left in the terrarium at, back inside to live with Liza and Ryan, who will remain with you. You know what? As long as I can have Liza and Ryan, yeah, I'm fine. That's a good plan, too. Mm. It doesn't become unmanageable, and then God, you know, they're on their way, but they've had a great start. And they're healthy and strong, and they have learned a thing or two about being human again from being around you. And they bring that energy out into the world. New super, a superhuman st strain of snail. John, this is great. Great lesson, Eckerd. Send this one to Amber. Uh, Autumn, your daughter. Uh, well, you still call her uh, uh, Amber. Yes, all right, Autumn. You Remember, you are my Amber from Egyptian times. Hmm. You're my daughter, Amber. Mm. All right, John. So much love. So much love. Eckerd, so much love. Hu uh, love and hugs to Kim. Already done. All right.